today we went to we we docked in Marseille. Um, this was a really easy day for planning purposes because we had arranged for a tour to Avignon. Uh, the tour was a private one. There were seven of us, so we went in a small van. And our guide, whose name was Alex, um, did a very good job. He drove us, picked us up at the terminal right after we got off the ship. And um, we loaded up and headed out of town. There isn't a great deal to see in Marseille, frankly. It's the city had the city of Marseille had turned into kind of a seedy port. They had allowed it to just go to wreck and ruin, apparently. And um, in recent years, they've rebuilt a lot of it, but it's new and it's just a port. And um, anyway, Avignon is about an hour away. So we drove there and the attraction of Avignon, the reason that people go there, is because in the early 1300s, the Pope moved from Rome to France. And um, I had always known this, that the Popes were housed in Avignon for uh, what I found out was about a hundred years. I, I'm not sure I realized it was quite that long. But um, I, I really didn't know why, and it was mostly for their own security. They were basically run out of Rome. Uh, the Vatican, as we know it today, did not exist. And so the Pope wasn't a ruler at all of anything. He was simply the Pope, and he came under all the laws and regulations and everything of the Roman, of, of the Roman government and um, this didn't suit him very well. And so anyway, they moved to Avignon and there they built a palace, a, a residence. There was already a cathedral in place. So they built the residence right next to the cathedral. The cathedral's considerably older, of course, since it was already there, um, dates back to the 1100s. And the, um, the palace is, was built in the mid 1300s. There were eight or nine popes in Avignon. And then when the last one moved back to Rome, there were two popes that came after that because there was kind of a schism. And so there was a pope in Avignon and another one in Rome and they were they argued and fussed over who was the actual real pope. In the end, the Roman popes won out and the Vatican was formed um, and the big wall built and all that. But um, it's an interesting little city. Uh, lots and what, what was more interesting to me than all the religion stuff that I don't care about was the surrounding countryside it's great growing country and and there are these just everywhere you look are massive huge very large vineyards an interesting thing about all that is that they mulch the grapevines with rocks which i thought was beyond strange and when i asked about it alex explained that the rocks are limestone. The, the soil is rocky in the first place, but they add rocks and it's obvious that they do. The rocks absorb the heat during the height of the day from the sunshine and um, release that heat at night acting a little like a heat sink. And that keeps the roots of the vines warmer than they would be otherwise. It also helps with the chemical process and 
apparently the limestone leaches into the soil and as the rains fall and um, this supposedly gives the grapes a better flavor. Now, frankly, I am no wine connoisseur. I mean, I'm really not. Wine all tastes like wine to me. And I, I can tell if a wine is sweet or dry. I, I get that part. But beyond that, I can't tell you if an expensive wine is better than a cheap wine. I, I have no idea. I, I, in fact, I think it's a lot of hooey. But um, we did go to a little uh, wine shop in town and sampled a bunch of wine. And what I did was get my sample and then dump it in Dave's glass because that way he got more. And so I drank very little of it but enough to taste it and know that it's just wine. It tastes like all the other wine. Um, and we none of us were in a position to actually buy any wine because the ship charges an $18 corkage fee if you bring any wine on board. And uh, so you have to add $18 to whatever price you pay for the wine, and then you can drink it in the dining room which is totally not worth it. So that was that.